Starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison. Hi, this is William Shatner. It is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Welcome all again! What's up, Vegas? It is Vegas Take. John Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us. Hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. I know I did, but boy, we got a lot to get to. A lot of stories to get to and go over. Donald Trump speaking to the media for 30 minutes yesterday. We will get to that. Going after the mooch. Better or work showing up at a gun show unannounced. The possibility of three mass shootings over the weekend denied. Thank goodness. By the great job of law enforcement, we will get to that. Uh, One of the most popular porn stars on the planet three or four years ago is now living homeless underneath a tunnel in Las Vegas. I know you guys are wondering who that is. We will get to that. No, it's not Ron Jeremy. We will get to that coming up here in just a few as well. Ron is doing just fine. Yeah, you you met him the other day. Uh, By the way, Golden Knights tickets on sale in less than an hour. They, They go on sale. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So like I said... A lot to get to, a lot to go over. I have a lot to go over myself. My parents arrived last night. They arrived at the airport at about 11 p.m. I pleaded with my father to please take an Uber to the hotel, put me on a guilt trip. (coughs) Excuse me. So I uh, picked them up in my 04 Hyundai Elantra, and it took about 20 minutes to get the luggage in there and tie up the trunk and everything. So... My night last night did not start off very well. It was a little stressful having three people in my car with about eight bags of luggage, taking them to a a very elegant hotel, a little bit off the strip, but it's cool. (laughs) See, this is the problem with eating combos for breakfast. You get some stuff caught in your throat when you're trying to do a three-hour show. But But they're so tasty. They are really good. By the way, that's the voice of Chris Wynn who joins us every Monday. Chris, I left you out there. I apologize. It's all good. Brian, JD, always good to see you guys on a Monday. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and I guess the other big news to announce, no, I'm not getting married or anything like that, but I, I did announce on my Facebook page that I am officially off the market. So um, sorry to all the women out there. I know they're, 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 just, they're just depressed today and angry that Brian Shapiro is no longer single. But don't worry, it'll probably last a few weeks and I'll be single again soon. I would say, what would you guys say the over-under is of how long this relationship lasts for, for myself? You guys, set if it lasts more than, Let's put it this way. If it lasts more than six months, I'll put it at plus 600. Right? Oh, you're out of your mind. Is that something that uh, would make months. sense, J.D.? Plus, plus 600? I, th- I say plus 600. Those are some serious. Well, I've known Brian Spro for roughly, roughly two years. Yes. I've never seen him in a Facebook relationship before. This is a brand new territory for me. I like, just, I like, just, I like the designation, too, as a Facebook relationship. I mean, that's classic. That, that's a big deal in today's day and age. <laughs> just before that, I was engaged before I met you. That that worked out really well. I'm going to say plus, plus 150 three months or more. I'm not Six is a little too long. You guys are three, way three off. Three months or more. You guys, are, you guys are way off, by the way. You should, first of all, you should have set the over under at 30 days. Not this three month, six month nonsense. You guys should know me more better than that. Anyway, we'll, well, nobody cares. We'll get back to my relationship status a little bit later. But I do want to start off. What a segue going from you know Brian's relationship status to gun control. But uh, we have a memo that was revealed showing House Republican strategy on these shootings and how to downplay white nationalism and blame the left. It is unbelievably disgusting. The proof is in the pudding. Congressional Republicans are circulating this talking points on gun violence that falsely describes the El Paso massacre and other mass shootings as violence from the left. They actually had the guts, I wouldn't even say guts, to put in a memo that the the Texas shooter, well, it was a lefty shooting, which could not be further from the truth. As we know, he was a white nationalist that was a Trump supporter and way on the right, going after illegals, you know, the verbiage of the manifesto and so on and so forth. So this document that was obtained by the Tampa Bay Times sent by White House Republicans, provides a framework for how to respond to anticipated questions like, why won't you pass legislation to close the gun show loophole in federal law? I'd say that's a legitimate question to ask. Or questions like, why shouldn't we ban high-capacity magazines? Do you believe white nationalism is is driving more mass shootings recently? The suggested response is to steer the conversation away from white nationalism to an argument that implies both sides are to blame. I'm sorry, but Democrats are not to blame for white nationalism. You can blame them for a lot of things. White nationalism is not one of them. And this 
basically, that's all this memo does. It, it doesn't talk about how to solve the problem of, you know, innocent Americans dying due to gun violence. It doesn't address the problem of hate crimes on the rise. It doesn't address the problems on how to help people, gun control, none of that stuff. This memo that was given to all Republicans, make no mistake about it, is to cover their ass so that nothing is done on the, on the gun legislation side. And the president spoke about this yesterday. He didn't speak about this memo, of course, because it makes Republicans look awful. And as I've been saying for a very long time, Republicans are going, mo- most of them, not all of them, are going to do whatever they can do to try to shut down comprehensive gun reform. They are going to do whatever they can do because they're getting paid, many of them, by the NRA. They support the NRA And they would rather take that side of the equation than take the side of innocent Americans dying on a regular basis to mass shootings. President Trump emphasized when asked about gun control and specifics on what his feelings are about comprehensive background checks, weapons of war, etc. He would not specifically answer the question because he is a coward, because he meets with the NRA on a regular basis. And by the way, he bragged yesterday about his grade. I have an A-plus with the NRA. I have a great relationship with the NRA. Well, of course you do, Mr. President, because you do everything they tell you to do. He emphasized about a very big mental health problem. He talked about that. He said it's the people that pull the trigger, not the gun that pulls the trigger. So we have a very, very big mental health problem, and Congress is working on various things, and I will be looking into it. By the way, if there's anyone that needs to be admitted into a mental hospital, it is the president himself. That's just my opinion. The White House, uh, Trump also said, uh, is very much involved in discussions Congress is having to address gun violence. But he wouldn't go into specifics. When asked about the specific issue, and he usually has an opinion on everything, and he is usually more than willing. He certainly had an uh, opinion on Scaramucci. He called him nuts last night. He has an opinion on everybody and everything. But when it comes to specifically his opinions on gun violence, he will not answer the question specifically about background checks and about these weapons. But he wants to talk about mental health. Why? Because that is what the NRA is pushing. That's why. That is what Republicans are pushing. They want to talk about mental health. They want to blame the left. But what they don't want to do is talk about comprehensive background checks and common sense gun laws. They don't want to talk about that. The president, might as well be Dana Loesch, because the president is a spokesperson for the NRA with the way he answers these questions and the way he talks. In October 1 shooting here in Las Vegas, the president answered those questions in the exact same way. The exact same way. He wouldn't get into specifics. He said Congress is going to be meeting. We need to figure this out. Guess what was done? Nothing. So I have absolutely no faith in Republicans getting together with Democrats and coming up with comprehensive gun reform. I I have absolutely no faith in this because the commander-in-chief might as well be the commander of the NRA because we all know he is on the NRA side. I want to get to these possible mass shootings that, thank God, did not take place over the weekend. But before I get to that, I want to get your thoughts on this. What do you guys think about this memo, which I think makes Republicans look absolutely horrible? And what do you think about the president's comments on gun control yesterday? What do you guys make of this? Well, I can continue to say this until I'm blue in the face, guys. If we're not going to make any changes with respect to gun legislation after six and seven-year-olds are slaughtered in Newtown, Connecticut, after there's a mass shooting at a high school in Florida— in Parkland, after there's a mass shooting at a gay bar in Orlando, Florida, after there's a shooting at a country music festival in Las Vegas where, you know, know, upwards of 60 people are killed and almost 500 are injured, and nothing is going to get done. What gives me any faith, what gives me any belief that after what has transpired here in the past two weeks, something is going to get done? Again, you mentioned about the approach of the Trump administration and Republicans when it comes to these uh, horrible tragedies that we've had, okay, and the way that they have approached it. We, I think, can understand, and we would take a step back, what's going to happen. Right now, Congress is in, se- is in, is in recess, right? Is basically, on, they're on vacation, okay, until early September. You... I. There's no other reason not to believe that they're just basically going to try to run out the clock until this media cycle is completed and goes through, and then we're going to go back to the way it was. Give me reasons why 
I'm wrong. Give me a reason why that's going to be the case, that we're not going to go back to being and doing exactly what we were doing before Mm -hmm. this happened, okay? Yeah. There is, you know, look, look, President Trump said things when when the two when the two tragedies happened after the 13 hours of carnage that took place. Yep. He said some things where he, basically making it sound like he and his administration wanted to do something with respect to assault weapons on the streets. Right. And with respect with respect to gun control and that he was going to make some moves or, you know, maybe wheel and deal and do something. And now what has transpired in the past in the past week plus nothing. And now, now we're starting to resort back to these talking points that you brought up, Brian, in the in the initial part of the show. To me, it's extremely disheartening, and it's something that gives me an indication that it's going to be business as usual in Washington D.C. when it comes to the gun debate. And that's my feelings. Aggressive feelings, Chris. I enjoyed yes. them. <laughs> You know, my thought process is this. We talked about this multiple times. We've had, we've had Republicans in here, Pakistan, et cetera, who have said mm-hmm. the Second Amendment, considering that back in 1776 when the Second Amendment was created, the, the, the most destructive weapon was the musket. Now you have weapons where you can kill someone. You can kill 120 to 200 people in a minute and a half. Should the laws be matching technology? I believe they should. My question is this. The, the gun business is about $13.5 billion a year in the United States. There are, 207, there are between 270 and 310 million guns right now in the United States. There's only 330 million people in the United States. Why should the gun business continue? So what, in, 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 four, in five to ten years, is there going to be 420 million guns in the United States? So every single person will have 1.5 guns in the United States? Yeah. What you're addressing, J.D., it, it, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. And you're right. These shootings are taking place. Obviously, there is an issue. There needs to be some type of some type of something done to prevent these these mass shootings from taking place, especially when they do involve our children, et cetera. But I just don't understand. There's so many guns in the United States already. Why can't you temper that expectation? And, and, I, and, I, and I don't know this number, but I would like to know what the revenue for automatic weapon sales is every year. I'm talking AR-15 Weapons, weapons like that, weapons that are legitimately destructive, and I don't know those numbers, but I'd like to know those. I, I think it. I think though, it is important to note when police work is done, and and police, FBI, they do a phenomenal job to stop these shootings from taking place. And and listen, this right here has nothing to do with gun violence or politics. It has to do with unbelievably fantastic police work. There should have been, and I, and I say should. We're glad that it didn't happen. But there, I should say, there could have easily have been three mass shootings over the weekend. I explain this in Connecticut, where I grew up, mm-hmm. where those kids were killed in that in that uh, kinder was it a first grade, Sandy second Hook. grade, yeah, Sandy yep. Hook, Connecticut. A 22 year old by the name of Brandon uh, Wagsall. I don't even like saying their names. Anyway, a 22 year old was arrested after authorities said he had expressed interest in committing a mass shooting on Facebook. He faces four charges of illegal possession of a large capacity magazines being held on $250,000 bond. He wanted to kill a number of people. He allegedly told his ex-girlfriend a good 100 kills would be nice. Okay? And it goes on. It goes on. A kid in Dayton Beach, Florida, facing charges of making written threats to kill or do bodily injury after a series of anonymous text messages. Somebody did due diligence and called the police. He said a school is a weak target. I'd be more likely to open fire on a large crowd of people from over three miles away. I'd want to break a world record for longest confirmed kills ever. And make no mistake about it, this kid was not joking. He had the weapons to do it. Somebody called the police. It was, I think, believe it was his girlfriend or one of his, a, yeah. a, girl, a, a female acquaintance of his who actually blew the whistle on him. And then in Ohio, a 20-year-old was arrested for allegedly threatening to carry out a shooting at the Youngstown Jewish Community Center, he wanted to kill as many innocent Jewish people as possible. In all three of these cases, it is important to note, besides the great police work that was done, clearly, people did their due diligence. Friends, family members, people saw postings on social media. They immediately contacted authorities, and make no mistake about it, authorities acted swiftly and promptly, and these three bastards are behind bars, and I hope they stay there for a very long time and think about what they were planning to do. Think about that. And you know what? They're lucky. They're lucky they didn't do it. Because if they did do it, they would have spent the rest of their lives behind bars. Instead, maybe they get 10 years or something like that, get some mental health, and maybe they'll have a second chance in life. I don't think they deserve it. 
if you're going to say things like that. But they're probably going to get a second chance. So while we talk about gun control, right, we talk about policies, we talk about politics, we talk about the left, the right, white supremacy. I think it is also important to note us as citizens, we need to play a role in this. We need to do our due diligence. We need to contact the authorities when we see a warning sign. We need to, if, when we go on social media, when we see something threatening, it is important for members of society to call the police immediately. Now, sometimes that does happen, and nothing gets done about it. For example, if it, correct me if I'm wrong, the mother of the shooter at the Walmart did contact the police and said she was concerned that her son had a, you know, a weapon. And I guess police were, they, they weren't able to do anything about it, but... It's these types of citizens that are saving lives with with law enforcement. I think that's also important, and it's important to note when this stuff is done. But look, this is a serious issue. These kids, this this is almost a daily basis where somebody's coming up with a scheme like this for a mass shooting to kill innocent people. We're seeing the copycats here left and right. These are scary times that we're living in. I don't know what the answer is, and we'll take some phone calls on the GCI hotline. What do you guys think about this? Look, we have to have our due diligence, right, Brian? We have to make sure that things are, you know, you know, that we're taking care of things. But you also, we have to ask the right questions, okay? We have to actually start. If we want to have a solution yeah. to what is going on, we have to address it in a way that's, you know, intellectually honest and, and approach it in a way that, mm-hmm. that uh, is going to actually do something. Here's what I want to do. I want to uh, take a quick break, and then we come back. Uh, we'll take some phone calls at 257-5396. Again, that number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation, the GCI guys hotline, 702-257-5396. Your thoughts on the president's comments in regards to gun control. What do you make of three possible mass shootings over the weekend stopped by law enforcement? Take your call, 702-257-5396. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Don. All right, welcome back. It is The Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro on a Monday. Chris Wynn joining us in studio as well. A lot to get to. Also, next segment I want to talk a little bit about, and I want to take the police officer's side on the shooting in Colorado Springs, Colorado. A 19-year-old shot in the back. Everyone's saying, uh, you know, oh, it's racism because he was African-American. He was shot in the back. Well, there's a little more to the story, and people are marching, you know, Black Lives Matter, all this other stuff, without knowing the facts in the case. I do want to get to that because I have some very strong opinions on that. But we are talking about gun control right now. The president's comments over the weekend, three mass shootings were stopped. And we'll go straight to the GCI guy's phone line, which is 257-5396. Let's go to Brady. Brady, what's going on? What's up, Brady? Yeah, good morning, guys. I wanted to bring up uh, one point that Trump brought up this weekend is we have to go after Antifa. We have to label that group a terrorist organization and eliminate them off the face of this earth. They cause more problems in these whack jobs. These last three or four people that are doing these mass shootings, they're all involved with Antifa. They are all Antifa. Can you please tell me the the shooting at Walmart? Can you please tell me, was that guy involved with Antifa? By the way, it's Antifa, not Antifa. Yes, he was. So he was a white supremacist who was involved with Antifa? Antifa? (laughs) Yeah, all these other ones. Where are you getting your information from? We need to be factual, okay? If you're going to start talking, you you need to be factual. It's not, that's not correct. That's not correct. Read, he had uh, nothing, all, the, the shooter in El Paso that. had nothing to do with Antifa. Brady actually has yeah. Alex Jones's cell phone number. They talk every day. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs> Brady, come on, man. Uh, you, you, you don't want to talk about white supremacy. You want to talk about, uh, uh, as you call it, Antifa? Yes. That, that okay, you th- okay, you want to talk about... Brady, do we Is still, still there? Do we lose you? Are you on your Obama phone? I think we lost you, Brady. I apologize. Brady, you're making it difficult you for can, us to talk to you right you, now. You, you can call back next segment, Brady. We're going to take some more calls. <laughs> we just don't have time to take more calls right now. 702 257 5396 is the number to call. See, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, though, guys. You know, we have white supremacy, a huge issue in this country. We should be talking about mental illness, yes, but we also have to talk about gun control. We have to talk about why hate crimes are on the rise. These three individuals over the weekend that wanted to kill people that they don't they weren't related to antifa okay these were hateful people who wanted to go after jews who wanted to kill as many innocent people as possible and it had nothing to do with antifa okay i don't know what this guy is talking about i really have no clue but we have a lot of issues facing this country in regards to violence and mass shootings and the first thing that enters my mind is not antifa i don't condone violence i don't think anybody should Okay, but when you do have people that uh, are going after KKK members, 
it's a little different than, you know, shooters that say they want to kill illegal immigrants and they want to kill brown people. That has nothing to do with Antifa. Last I checked, and I, listen, I don't condone violence. I don't condone Antifa. I don't condone anybody who wants to resort to violence. But last I checked, the shooter at Walmart used the same verbiage that Donald Trump used. Remember? Invaders. I read the manifesto. What we need to do is we need to stop demonizing people. What we need to do is we need to treat people with respect. And you know what? It does start at the border. I want a strong border. I want people to come into the country illegally. But with these kids and, you know, getting into a whole bowl of worms here, they deserve they deserve to take showers. They deserve soap. They shouldn't be drinking from toilets. They need to be treated in a humane way. And I'm going to tell you something. Antifa has nothing to do with that. Antifa has nothing to do with these three individuals over the weekend that wanted to kill innocent people. we got to take a break. But when we come back, we'll take your phone calls at 257-5396. Again, the number to call 702-257-5396. And it is my understanding that J.D. has a stat that he would like to share with us when we come back from the break. And it does involve guns. So we will get to that. And again, I want to talk a little bit about this shooting that took place in Colorado Springs, Colorado. African-American, 19 years old, shot in the back. Everybody wants to blame the police. They're calling it murder. Well, guess not. Guess what, folks? You look at the evidence in the case, it's not murder. It's justified. We'll get to that when we'll be right back. The Vegas Take, 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Don.